welcome back to Dear Sleep. This is part three, the final part of my uh, crane and jib runner build. Uh, and this is going to look at painting and weathering. I'm going to start by uh, priming using Halford's uh, white primer, the metal parts on the build so far, which on the crane are the axle boxes here. And um, on the jib runner, are the uh, handles. So uh, I've masked off the wheels to protect them from the spray and I've removed uh, the bogies from the jib runner. That should do fine. I'll just prime the uh, bolster wagon as well and then I can start the painting and weathering. First I'm going to paint the uh, planking on the jib runner using um, Artist's uh, raw umber paint. I'll just add a little water to this. This is acrylic paint. Now it's a nice sort of dull brown colour. So I'm going to brush this on All right, that's about halfway so um, I'm going to take some of this off now. I'll use uh, some water and a cotton bud. Uh, no, I won't use water actually. I'll just the paint's quite wet. I'll just try with a cotton bud and just wipe that back. I want the cotton bud to go where my fingers can't, which is between the boxes there. But where I can, um, where I have easy access, I can simply wipe it with a tissue. Don't want it to be too precise. That looks quite good, I think. That's the weathered uh, look to the boarded uh, floor of the uh, jib wagon. It uh, looks quite convincing. Um, often you need little more than uh, a brush and just some diluted paint to get the effect. The colour scheme I've chosen for the crane is the early British Rail colour of black. I believe uh, it was supplied black from Booth's. Black at this scale uh, always looks too heavy in my view. Um, although I have uh, blackened the uh, jib, um, I am going to pre-shade. It's a technique I used on the water tower and have used for a while um, on plastic kits in general. And it's going to add a little bit of depth because although it's black I'm going to finally spray it with shades of grey. I've thinned my, uh, I've thinned the paint uh, to uh, one part colour to two parts thinner and I've set the pressure on my uh, compressor down to 15 psi. So I'm going to now just take some of the paint and feed it in the cup of the airbrush. And then I'm going to just pre-shade parts of this. It's a bit fiddly to get it, keep it in the camera, uh, but I'll do my best. I'll just test it. That looks okay. This doesn't have to be fantastically accurate, but I'm just going to do a, a gentle spray just to build that up black so just along the roof edge and just under there where there's some accumulated dirt and certainly shadow that just darkens it around the uh, door frame there Oops. I 
I don't want to put the black everywhere, just... in areas where I think will be the darkest. Okay, so along the bottom perhaps of the windows. Uh, certainly around this frame here. And along the underside there. Let's get the paint to come through a little more. This little square here which around it will always collect a little dirt. It's a little raised panel so I can bring that out a little bit I think with a little bit of paint around there. I'll leave the roof light because that's going to be light so I'll continue around this in a similar way and build up the uh, the pre-shading uh, technique on the crane. With the crane pre-shaded I'll turn my attention now to the jib runner. You can see that I've masked off, carefully masked off all of the uh, planking to protect it from the spray and I'll, I'll do a similar thing here um, on the jib runner. It's just pre-shade with some dark Basically you just keep going until you feel you've got some sort of uh, effect. Once the pre-shading is finished I'll apply a light coat of dark grey made with uh, two parts black, one part white over the entire model. After the darker grey wash was um, applied, I let that dry and then using a light aircraft grey it was, but any light grey will do, I just dusted, as it were, some light grey along the top surfaces. Um, this gives, I think, the uh, model a lot of extra depth and it breaks up this, uh, what is potentially a monotonous uh, grey. So this is the basic painting finished now and I will uh, cover next the uh, applying of the decals. For a convincing painted on look for decals they need to be applied to a glossy uh, surface. So this has been painted with matte paint and in the area where I'm going to put the decals which is um, on both sides of the roofs and there's one either side there's a panel here and one on the other side. Um, I don't think there's any need to gloss the whole of the uh, crane. I'm just going to gloss the area where the decals are going. For this I used uh, Johnson's Clear. It's an acrylic um, it's an acrylic floor polish actually. Um, but any, any gloss varnish will do. The nice thing with this is that you can, you just brush it on, there's no need to airbrush it. So I'm going to just apply it to the areas where I need the decals. Okay that'll dry quite quickly. I might need to put another, another coat on 
and then we're ready for the decals. Familiar to plastic modellers is a two-part decal system. There is a setting solution which uh, simply helps uh, the decal stick to the surface and a softening solution which softens the decal which helps it draw down over raised uh, details such as rivets or into recessed lines like panel lines. I have the first decal here, uh, the name booth to go on the side on the uh, this side of the roof and I'll put it in the in some water just to soak for about 30 seconds. Meanwhile I'll just prepare this surface with some of the setting solution. Okay, hopefully that won't dry too quickly with my with my lights. The decal is now ready so I'll gently slide it off onto the roof with a brush. Okay, that was a bit of a struggle because the the heat from my uh, lights uh, dried out the setting solution a bit too quickly. So now I'm just going to press that down, which looks okay. And because of the uh, rivet detail, I'm going to just finish this with some of the softener. just to help draw that decal down over the rivets. With the decals on and en enough time allowed for them to dry, it's time to put another coat of the clear, the acrylic varnish, just to seal the decals. I think the crane is now beginning to take shape. When everything is dry, I put a further coat of matte acrylic varnish now over the um, glossy areas to bring everything back down to the um, to the overall matte colour. I my favourite um, matte varnish is in fact a water-based one, so uh, to avoid it running, I'm going to use a hair dryer to uh, dry it quickly as I go. With all the decals applied and sealed, it's now time to start the final weathering. We'll start with applying some more of the dark grey over the decals just to tone the contrast down a wee bit. Now it's time to remove the uh, Tamiya masking tape. It's beginning to look very good now with the um, masking tape off the, um, the the bed here and I've also added a little detail painting around the uh, vacuum pipes and some of the handles with uh, Vallejo white that was just brush painted on. Similarly I've brush painted some white detail on the crane chassis, the edges of the steps, the wheel 
and the um, little dials on the boxes there. So now we're ready for some general track grime which is basically my um, uh, dark earth uh, paint with a little a little black in it. That looks fine and I'll repeat this for this side and of course the the crane chassis as well. The crane or uh, jib runner is finally done. I've added streaking and uh, oil washes and I've dry brushed on some of the weathering powders. I haven't shown you this uh, again because I've covered it um, in the water tank videos and the JCB build. The crane is also finished and weathered but I haven't quite finished the build of this yet. Um, the hook of the crane is made of plastic and has no weight. So you can see this uh, cable here, the weight of the hook is not strong enough to make that sit properly. So what I'm going to do is replace the lifting cable with some fine brass chain. This has been blackened with the uh, chemical I used when I showed you the Spratt and Winkle coupling fittings. And um, I'm going to replace a length of the nylon thread with this chain. I made a jig and drilled a 1.5mm hole in the bar of the hook and fitted the chain inside that and uh, secured it with a couple of uh, spots of super glue. Now with the jig removed the hook hangs quite naturally. The weight of the chain is enough to make the look convincing. I've now got to finish painting the hook itself. Glazing the windows with crystal clear and fixing the ladder to the back of the cab completes this build. I hope you've enjoyed all three parts. I will leave you now with some stills I've taken with the crane posed on my railway. Thanks very much for watching.